Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you a new strategy that I developed on how to boot USB on a PowerPC Mac. So normally uh, to get USB booting on one of these PowerPC Macs, you kind of have to get a lot of luck. You either need a powered USB hub or very specific USB drives that actually work and play well with the open firmware interface in order to actually get the thing booting from USB. And even then, it'll only work on some machines. But this will work on every single PowerPC machine ever made. Well, everything past 1998. Everything with USB ports, obviously. So in order to boot from USB, you're going to need two pieces of information beforehand. The partition number and the USB port ID. Now, in order to get the partition number, plug in the USB drive that you want to use to boot your PowerPC Mac. So... This one already has Mac OS X Leopard on it. If you don't have one, you can make one. Just use Restore and Disk Utility uh, to restore a DMG over or whatever. Just something I thought I'd add here. In terms of versions of Mac OS, uh, the only version of Mac OS that works 100% of the time in my experience is Mac OS X Leopard. Tiger, the 10.4.6 DVD at least, sometimes hangs at the very end of the boot process on newer machines, but seems to work on all my older machines that can still run it. Anything before Tiger definitely won't work, especially things involving multiple discs like Panther. You ha I think it's only available on multiple CDs. Uh, so you can't use any of those versions. And also if you're dealing with an ISO image instead of a DMG, you're gonna wanna just use DD or any sort of program like Etcher to deal with that one. For a DMG, you wanna use Disk Utility and restore it over. Now go and open up Disk Utility and go over to your USB flash drive and select Info. Now we're going to look at this disk identifier, and the last number here for 3, and also the partition number down here, are what we care about. The partition number for this is 3. Next up, we're going to need another piece of information, and for that we're going to need a USB keyboard. Any USB keyboard will work, including if you're on a desktop, the USB keyboard that you already have. So we're going to need to shut down the computer. Now, unplug any USB devices other than the keyboard. If you're on a desktop, it should be the only thing plugged in. If you're on a laptop, it should also be the only thing plugged in. Turn on the computer and hold down Command, Option, O, and F to boot into open firmware. We're using this keyboard as a device to figure out which USB port ID we need to specify in the boot argument because we don't know whether it's USB 0, USB 1, USB 2, etc., etc. So now we need to go ahead and type in dev USB 0. LS, and if we see a keyboard here, that means that our USB device ID is zero. The USB port that the keyboard's plugged into, the port ID is zero. You'll see why this is important later. If not, we need to move on to the next one. So let's do dev USB 1. And we can see the keyboard shows up. You know, if it didn't, it would be dev USB 2, USB 3, etc. Also, make sure if you're on a laptop that there's nothing about a mouse because Oftentimes, keyboards are attached through the USB bus on laptops. The touchpad will show up and stuff like that. We don't want that because that's not going to be helpful for what we're doing next. So what we're doing next is we're going to go ahead and shut down the computer again by typing in shut-down. Now unplug the keyboard and plug the USB drive into the same port your USB keyboard was plugged into. So the USB port ID for the, for the USB drive will be the same as what it was for the keyboard. Now we power on and hold down command option O and F again. And that port will always be that specific USB port ID. So if you do this again, you just have to remember whether it's USB 0, USB 1, etc. The next step here is to type in probe dash USB space boot USB one in my case. If it, if it was zero, then it'd be zero. There's a port over here, that's zero. Slash disk colon and then our partition number comma double backslash colon tbxi. I'm gonna run this command here. I'll show you what happens. You can see we got an Apple logo. I have verbose mode enabled, so it's going to boot with a bunch of verbose information. And 
And as you can see, we are now in the installer. So we now have a fully functional install. We could install Leopard from here if we wanted to. So now I want to show you the same process, but with a Linux USB on an iBook G3 clamshell. Because you can go all the way back to that machine. All right, we got the clamshell set up right here. Um, now, one thing about Linux to note is while you can boot Linux on any of these machines through USB, um, on machines with USB keyboards, whether that be desktop computers or laptops with internal USB bus, uh, which is everything after about 2003, the grub menu or the Yaboot menu or any of that, you can't actually use your keyboard there because when you probe USB, it breaks the USB keyboard for some reason and I have no idea why, and I also cannot probe a single USB port because going to the USB device and typing probe, while that should theoretically work, the USB device shows up, but it's just not functional. And the Linux boot command is slightly different. So I don't, I don't need to test this out with the keyboard here because it's a single USB port machine, and the USB port is always gonna be USB zero if there's only one. So let's do probe USB boot, USB zero slash disk colon. We don't need a partition number here, at least not with Debian, comma, backslash system, backslash library, backslash core services, backslash grub dot elf. That is the command that should work for Debian 12. It might be different on other Linux distributions but it's the command that works for Debian 12, so let's click enter here. And we can see we get the welcome to grub screen. Now this might hang here for upwards of 30 seconds on machines with USB 2. And this is where our major issue with keyboards will come into play. Not on this computer, but on most computers you're gonna get stuck here. You won't be able to go any further. I think with Yaboot, it will boot after like 45 seconds of the default settings, but you won't be able to change any of the settings. There is a way to get around that, but it's pretty complicated. The way you get around that is by booting the machine to open firmware, connecting the machine to another machine through an ethernet cable, setting up a Telnet server with the right IP address, Telnetting into the computer, running the probe and all that from Telnet, and then you can use the keyboard on the other computer to actually control the boot menu. But that's probably a waste of time and uh, time better spent actually burning a CD because that's still probably the best way to do things. Except in the case of Leopard because Leopard requires a dual layer DVD and I, have, I bought a bunch of dual layer DVDs, burned them and it, it, just, it didn't work so there's actually a practical reason to boot from USB this way. Not to mention broken CD drives, of course. see we are now at the language selection screen for Debian so that means the installation um, has started it is able to detect the USB drive and load all the drivers off of it and yeah it's able to install Debian completely from USB on this iBook G3 clamshell anyways I hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching and I'll see you in the future